Can you talk a bit about working with your dad? I was directing him in a film. And he had about seven or eight pages of dialogue that he had to do as a voiceover. So I gave him a few weeks to learn it. He was older than I, so... So he had that, and then I came to do it, and he goes, well, I didn't learn the bits to say off camera. I'm like, Thanks for telling me where I have to cut everything. And then he proceeded to, as I walked off the set, he proceeded to slag me mercilessly for about five minutes to the other actors. And I came back in, and I said, by the way, if you're going to talk, remember you're wearing a microphone. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome to sweaty Pittsburgh. <laughs> Trying to be Florida right now, I guess. How you guys doing? You good? So we're under a really weird situation right now, obviously with the, with the strike happening. There's been a lot of massive panic ideas that somehow, some way, whatever we do at a convention cannot possibly promote the people that we're at strike against. Right? So you got this really weird scenario by which my memories and my stories, which are mine and do not belong to Warner Brothers, somehow become Warner Brothers property according to my union. They're not. So I'm here to promote me as always. Um, so I reckon there'll be another couple of weeks of this um, BS until they work out that, oh, in fact, I'm not actually promoting a show because nobody's... Um, you know, the, the producers have not paid me to be here. I'm not here on a, a mission to get you to watch something that you've already watched 15 times. <laughs> um, so it's basically about me. So if you want to ask me about working, working with tall people or stupid people, <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's okay. But we have to, I do not want to be the poster boy for breaking some sort of rules which don't really make a lot of sense right now but it will change so don't don't imagine that this is the way it's going to be for the for the next periods of time it's going to uh, it will change and it will evolve the good news is uh, you might have seen that uh, there are some things that we are doing in production and you might have misheard some of the stuff using the words waiver there is no waiver as it were for anything you don't waive work in a strike but there are some productions that do exist and some things that are being done which have agreed to the interim contract, which means basically everything that has been asked for. So even if those things do end up going to any one of the people we're striking against, they will be done so under the rules that we've asked them to negotiate with us. So the only reason why a union, either one of the two unions, would ever agree to letting their actors work in a strike is because... They're not breaking the strike. They're, in fact, working for somebody who's agreeing to everything that we're asking for. Does that make sense? And then in, in, and in, a, uh, in a film sense and, and or something that's made for television sense, uh, those rules have to be adhered to in perpetuity. So if I, if I made a film with my friends, uh, did it through my union, uh, used an interim contract, right, uh, and then sold it to one of the people that we're now striking against once the strike is over, uh, they would still have to adhere to the rules that were set out in that contract, which is actually the way to do it. But uh, that's just my opinion. I'm not advocating for what my union's position is. If you're not sure, go look it up yourself. But it just means right now, for some reason, they think that my memories have something to do with promoting a show. And they really don't. They have to do with promoting me, which is a lot more fun. <laughs> so uh, I do better with questions. So those of you who want to ask me questions, come up to the mics and we'll... I'll start bullying you as fast as possible. <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> what do you want? Stop touching it. There's a lot of short Leave it alone. Just speak into it. So, uh, with the strikes going on, I know that I've been reading a lot more. Oh. See? What did I say to you? <laughs> this is what happens when you start touching. Are you married? God help your husband. I mean, that could be painful. Yes, I went there. Go on. All right. So with the strikes going on, I know that... Speak so I other people can hear you. <laughs> closer to the mic. Don't touch it. Just put your face closer to the mic and speak so you can hear your own voice. So with the strikes going on, I know that I and some other people have been reading some more. 
Are there books that you've read lately that you've really enjoyed? Or no, I've never learned how to read. read. I never learned how to read. <laughs> it's an interesting. It's an interesting thing. I go through phases, auditory and visual, etc. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not reading any more than I did before. I mean, strike hasn't stopped me being here, so you know, I'm still doing stuff. Plenty of things to do in my house. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. It's a good question for somebody who reads. <laughs> what do you want? Um, hi, my name is Candy, and I was wondering, what have you done outside of acting? Like, what other jobs have you done? Have you done any other jobs? Jobs? Yeah, outside of acting. You have no idea what I do or how I do it, right? So I was a reasonably successful musician most of my life. Um, so I've always played music and toured and made a lot of records in my time and fun stuff like that. Pick that up. What have you dropped? I'm just, I, have, I, I have serious OCD, so I can see things from miles away and see things happen. I was just messing with you. Um, what, what job do you have? I, I recently worked at a shoe store, but that's about it. Al Bundy. <laughs> that could become a series. <laughs> cool. Do you love working at a shoe store? No. Right. So there's, there's two types of jobs in life, right? Two types of jobs. Yeah. There's the job you do so you can have some money to do the things you want to do. And there's the job that you do that you love. And I'm lucky enough to have the job that, to, that I do that I love. And that's an amazing gift. And I appreciate you lot for that. Because, I don't know, you've kind of followed me along those lines for a few years. Um, and whatever it is that I do next will be hopefully interesting to you guys, too. Get that, will you? See, I told you I've got OCD. It drives me crazy. Is that, did I almost answer your question? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> what? Hi. From the Vertically Challenged. Yes, you are. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping you can answer this question. Can you talk? Why is it too difficult? <laughs> can you talk a bit about working with your dad? Working with my dad's a lot of fun. Absolutely a lot of fun. Um, we taught together for years and we did two films together and a couple of TVs. It's kind of fun. A lot of fun to do. He's annoying and cranky though sometimes. I think he felt the same way about me. <laughs> I was directing him in a film. And he had about seven or eight pages of dialogue that he had to do as a voiceover. So I gave him a few weeks to learn it. He was older than I. So, so he had that. And then I came to do it. And he goes, well, I didn't learn the bits that say off camera. I'm like, Thanks for telling me where I have to cut everything. And then he proceeded to, as I walked off the set, he proceeded to slag me mercilessly for about five minutes to the other actors. And I came back in, I said, by the way, if you're going to talk, remember you're wearing a microphone. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. What? Um, Where are all the tall people? Right here. Nah, they're all in Austin, I think. You're not very tall yourself either. What? Oh! It's Sound like a spaceship going down what um so my question is out of all the places that you've traveled for work or in general what was your favorite place to travel to hmm not pittsburgh <laughs> <laughs> i like the people but my god um i don't know there's a lot of great places in the world the great thing get that will you put it on silent Whoever it is, put it on bloody silent. Yeah, liar. Liar. You should learn. Um, the weird thing is, with what, you know, the shows that I've been lucky enough to do and, and the stuff that you like tends to be the stuff I like. So the, the amazing times I've had on shows that have lasted, I usually get pulled into shows, you know, a season or so in, and they're going like, oh, we've got a bit of a lull here. Let's get Mark in to shake it up a bit. So I come in and I'm supposed to come and do an episode and I end up staying for, I don't know, eight years. That sort of thing. Um, and those, you get used to the, 
the towns and the places where you've been working. And, you know, you, you like it because of the people, really. I think most towns are pretty much the same. They've all got the same shops in them. So there's no... I don't think there's a lot of differentiation between places. But uh, when you get a, an audience that are lovers of things, that care about things and have passion for things, it's the most incredibly unifying thing. I mean, there's people here that are not from here, right? They travel to come here. And so I've been lucky enough to travel the world and see people from all over the world and um, entertain them. Kind of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Uh, so is that your defiant pose? Probably. There you go. Bad or anxious? I don't know. I like the anxious one. Best place to have a panic attack convention. Right. Yep. Oh my god! How many people here have been diagnosed diagnosed with a mental illness? Look around. <laughs> Just look around. Look around. This is terrifying. So a parking. It's terrifying. In any other group of people, it'd be like you know, group of conventioneers rob a Seven Eleven. Never happens, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, kind of cool. Go on. What? So, um, at risk of boring people who have been here for the past two conventions, or the two panels, I've been asking Alex and Rich about broccoli. Who so cares? I'm not going to ask you about broccoli. Good. But I've been making this cookbook, apparently, with a broccolini recipe and a broccoli recipe. You know, it's all from the same plant, right? Yes. Yeah. Kale, broccoli, broccoli, mm -hmm. it's all the same thing. My dad's a cook, I know. Yeah. So, what would you add? Carrots are different, though. Yeah. Really? They're also orange. Which Maybe is that's different. why they were orange. Yeah. No clue. Not always orange. Some of them are white and purple and red. So, what would you add to this cookbook of random things that actors have given me? <laughs> Write your own fan fiction. What would you delete from the cookbook? Write your own recipes and fan fiction. Working on it. Don't care. Eat. <laughs> Will do. What? Good morning, Mark. Good morning. My it's name not the Sharon. morning, so you know it's the afternoon. For me, it's still morning. No, it's the afternoon. <laughs> For everybody here. You know that thing they call noon, 12 o'clock? Anything that happens after that is usually called afternoon. Afternoon. So good afternoon would be appropriate. <laughs> I work graveyard. Do I get a good Marriott, afternoon? That's my job. Do I get a Do I get a good afternoon? Good afternoon. There you go. I'm happy now. Now that Now that I know what time of day it is. Good. <laughs> um, so I have a question for you regarding your music, and I see that there is a banjo up there. Have I don't you play played? banjo. No. Do you play? God no. I hate banjo. Banjo. Is that going to be for you playing? You know what the definition of a gentleman is. Yes. A man that can play the piano accordion and doesn't. <laughs> All the Scottish bagpipes. Horrendous instruments. Instruments of war. <laughs> the only person I like playing you, you banjo is, is... learning how to play the bagpipes. <laughs> don't care about how to do any of that stuff. It's terrible. It's like wrestling an octopus. Now, Whelan pipes, Irish pipes, beautiful. Scottish pipes, harsh. Annoying. What? Hot. Thanks for the weather forecast. <laughs> You know, menopausal thing, right? How's Aww. your family? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. How's your family? Cool. How's yours? They're still alive, which is a good thing, right? Are, are you planning something we need to know about? <laughs> You'd have to meet them to understand that. No. My, my question, though, is you're sober. Congratulations. It's not a question. I'm not, I haven't asked It was a yet. statement. I haven't asked my question yet. Apparently. <laughs> Very astute of you. <laughs> okay, when you are working, yes, and you are looks like you're drinking alcohol. What do I drink? Uh huh. Diet, Coke, and water at room temperature. Most repulsive, <laughs> horrific tasting stuff you've ever drank in your life, which gives you that thing. So, um, and if it's a cocktail on. The show with the talk. That's people. what I'm asking about, yeah. That would be what's the vitamin water? That's the horrible milky looking stuff. You say it looks like cognac or scotch that you're drinking. No, that's diet coke and water. Oh, okay. All right. I was just curious. Cool. That's how you can poison your family if you need yeah. to know. <laughs> I'll 
Keep that in mind, thanks. Gonna read about that next week, aren't we? <laughs> what? Um, my dad has a question, um, but he, he's not here. He was too afraid to come up. Where is he? He's sitting right there. Get over to the mic. <laughs> Turn the stupid flashlight off the back of your phone. <laughs> this is just drawing attention to yourself. Get up, walk over to the mic, and stop making your kid do your work for you. Come on. Come on. What's the question? Well, I was a huge fan of you uh, for years, especially with Battle Star Galactica. Yeah. So what do you think uh, was the favorite part of being in that show? Ending of the show? <laughs> the, the, my favorite part of the ending of that oh, show? Oh, no, the whole show. Oh, the, the end. end. Yeah, well, <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah, definitely my favorite part. Has a beginning, a middle, and an end, unlike a lot of sci-fi. So it has an amazing ending. <laughs> Pissed everybody off. It was great. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Was it worth getting up for? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> well done. You finished pushing your kid around? Yeah. <laughs> Does your kid have a question? Do you have a question? No question? Well, I mean, I guess, what's your favorite like interaction with a fan you've ever had? Oh, um, well, there's a, fa there's a famous one. I was in New Zealand, and there was this girl, very, very, very tall girl, and she was shaking and sweating and having a hard time. And I said, it's okay, you know, take a deep breath. She goes, I'm just trying not to ship myself. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> That's pretty good. It always makes me laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. What? Um, I know you for, um, for... I don't know you. <laughs> you don't know me. I've seen you on uh, Leverage. What's your, uh, what, what's your, what's it like working on Leverage? Like working on anything else. I mean, the, the bottom line is we're not supposed to be discussing shows per se, but I will tell you this. Um, in all the things that I've done, that I've done usually more than one episode of, I'm there for a reason. I'm there because I'm enjoying myself and I'm doing something. I'm trying to tell a story. So anything that I was there for, for five years, you can probably imagine that I was having a really good time. So, you know, you get to know people, different people, and, you know, that you happen to have been talking about something that was written for me, which is kind of nice. So that was fun in and of itself. And yet again, another, you know, again, another character that I get to sink my teeth into and enjoy for a period of time. And it's the things you guys tend to enjoy are the things I've enjoyed. It's kind of an interesting correlation, but it's always been that way. Cool. Hey. Hi. Um, Not just, very, you're quite short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting shorter. You are? <laughs> the, I, the older I get, the, the shorter I get. It's great. Um, just wondering, do you have any fun, funny, interesting, Animal related stories, either a personal pet or something what, work related. Moose and squirrels? No, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> you didn't think that one but, through, did you? No, no. Um, but I meant like be personal pet. I was doing, I once or, did a TV, I did a TV show where they decided to bring a tiger on the set. And I did this show and they brought the tiger and I was like, yeah, I like with a tiger. It'd be cool. I'll be cool. Brought the tiger in, and my butthole went. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is an eating machine, <laughs> and like, you can't use tigers that are that are fully grown because they're not safe. So the tiger is only like three quarter size tiger eating machine, <laughs> and it was kind of hungry and got pissed off and actually walked around and went by Video Village, turned around and came back out. And the handler was having a bit of a problem having it calm down. I'm really, really glad I didn't. We did a split screen. I was on one side. The tiger was on the other. Yeah, that was terrifying. That's kind of how I felt when I met you yesterday. I thought yeah, it'd be I'm, fine. And then when I met you, I just went, whoop. What, your asshole puckered up? <laughs> Excuse the language, kids. I got so anxious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, do you like cheesecake? And if so, what's your favorite topping? Depends. Proper cheesecake? I like just cheesecake. I do like, I do actually like 
pomegranate syrup and sort of things like that and interesting stuff. Passion fruit, something that's a little sharp, acidic. Raspberry's good. Great question. Next. Hi, you want to tell people this is my... Speak into the microphone. Sorry. You want to tell people this is That's not tall. My, my wife's six girl. foot tall. He's six foot tall. Yeah, my wife's six foot tall. She's tall. <laughs> it's tall. What's the question? My question is, are you allowed to talk about your being the episode of Doctor Who that you were on? I'm not allowed to talk about anything oh, I was doing. Dang. That's the weird stuff. Well, it's like, hoping it's going to be another couple British, of weeks. British, it would be different. No, it's, it was shown in America, on BBC America, so no. All right. But, I do, um, I do have a question, but I don't know if you're able to talk about this. Can't hear you. I have a question, but I don't know if you're able to talk about this. Um, what was it like working with um, Jensen and Jared? No idea. <laughs> I once had a conversation, somebody got up, Hi, I really like working with you. What's it like working with Jensen and Jared? I mean, nobody ever bloody asked them what it's like working with me. <laughs> and then I saw a video of the same person getting up at, later on the same convention and going, Hi, to Jensen and Jared. Hey, I really like working with you. What's it like working with Mark Shepard? So brave enough to do it. And without a moment's hesitation, they turned and looked at each other and went, short. <laughs> I'm not short. I'm only short on that show. Hey. Hi. Um, I switched up my question halfway through this line, but that's okay. Um, have you ever had a... No. <laughs> I switched out my answer halfway through the question. <laughs> yes. No. Maybe. Has there ever been a horror movie that really made you, like, genuinely terrified? No. No? No. No? No. Me too. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Shepard. Um, Mr. Shepard was my father. I'm Mark. You said me. That's a failure. Are you allowed to talk about your music first before I ask? I'm allowed to do whatever the hell I want, to be absolutely honest. All right, I just awesome. don't want a whole load of scrutiny and difficulty because a bunch of people haven't quite worked out that my memories are mine. Right. On the Barracuda song, Codine, did you sing which the one? vocals? Codine? Codine, yeah, which is an old cowboy song from the 1880s. Did you sing the backup vocals for that song? No, I didn't. You did not. That's Chris Wilson singing the backup vocals from the Flaming Groovies. Um... No, I didn't. That's definitely me playing drums on it, so it's kind of cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. That's random. <laughs> what? Hello. Oh, um, I know from social media that you have over 30 years of sobriety. Um, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I have about a year and a half. About? Something... You don't know the exact Yeah, amount? I know the exact day. You're not sure cause... what your last drink was? Yeah, it was. My last drink was over two years ago. My last anything was a year and seven months. That would be how long you're sober then. Yeah, that's how long I'm sober. A there year you and go. Seven well months. done. Thank you. Um, th thank you. Wow. Who are these people following you? Oh, um, they're... I don't know your names. <laughs> huh? Really? You don't know the names of your children? <laughs> Damon, they're Ronan and Damien. They are the um, brave soldiers that you're going to roast after me. I don't um, roast kids. Kids are cool. Kids, kids are cool. Adults are dumb. Mm -hmm. They're cool. Um, what is something you know after 30 years that you didn't know at a year and a half? How old I'd get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still exactly the same. Still a day at a time. You don't drink, you don't die, you don't kill anybody, you don't kill yourself. And one thing I'm absolutely certain of is a drink's not going to make it better. How's that? Very helpful. Thank you. Cool. Hold on. I want to know what these two reprobates want. Give me a second. Right, you lot. Who sent you up here? Me. You just decided to come up by yourself? I did. You did? Good one. What's your favorite season? Fall. No, of the show. What show? Supernatural. I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> um, pick a number between seven and nine. Eight. There you go. <laughs> nice. Get it? Yes. Good. Who are you? What's your favorite? Are you like the demon child? Mm, no. <laughs> Good. Aww. Who's your favorite character? In what? Supernatural. 
What? Supernatural. Never heard of it. <laughs> Who's your favorite character, more important? Crowley. I love you. You're a good kid. How old are you, six? Seven. Seven, sorry, my apologies. I just took away a seventh of your life there. I'll tell you what, I'll give you another 10 years no matter what, all right? Down low, too slow. Down low, too slow. What did I tell you? Look in the eyes, now do it. There you go. <laughs> no, I'm good. Though. Thank you, though. Hey. Hi. Not at the um, moment. It's been a while. First <laughs> right. 33 and a half years. <laughs> um, other than yourself, because, you know, you're awesome. Who is yes, your I am. favorite singer? I don't sing. I have sang, but I don't sing. Who's my favorite singer? There's loads of great singers. Depends what genre of music you're talking about. Alternative rock. Alternative rock. Yeah. Um, the, late, the late great singer from Soundgarden. Awesome. Can uh, I get a high five for that? No. No? Okay. Got a low five. Too slow. Up high. <laughs> Down low. Too slow. Up high. Down. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, that's how you do it. But yeah, I mean, there's a there's a there's some great singers in that lot. Um, lead singer from uh, no, that was Josh Clayton Felt. He's no longer with us. Um, he had a great voice. Um, but no, I was thinking of uh, Alison Chains. Lead singer of Alison. What a voice that boy had too. Uh, a lot of people not with us. Kurt Cobain had an interesting voice. Think about alternative voices. I always like John Lydon's voice though, in Public Image. But I grew up listening to uh, what was ostensibly called black music when I was a kid. So I listened to what was originally R&B and soul and funk. And that's what I was into when I was a kid. And that's the music that influenced me. So you had the great voices that took us to the cool voices. So you had the Sam Cooks and you had uh, all these amazing singers that were ostensibly still playing to a large white audience. And then you had the Al Greens and Marvin and Stevie and people that just made me, made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. You know, and Aretha and Etta James and, you know. And the funny thing is if you guys are interested in, in, in that era, there's an amazing documentary that you, I know you can get it on Apple called uh, Muscle Shoals. And if you watch the documentary, it was a little area in Alabama Muscle Shoals, tiny little place with a studio with the, one of the strangest men of all time who was the recording engineer and producer of that place. And some of the greatest music ever made was made in this tiny little studio in Alabama. And you'll have no idea just how influential. Um, you know the song Sweet Home Alabama? You know, this, and there's a line that says in Muscle Shoals, they have the Swampers. The Swampers was the band of that studio. And they played on everything they played on everybody's everything which is mind-blowing to me uh wilson pickett and they played with uh they played with everybody aretha's first sessions after singing extensively white pop music changed when she went to muscle shoals and that's where she found her voice so if you love music the way i love music it is a chapter of of music that changed everything and it was a bunch of white hill, hillbillies playing on some of the best black records ever made, which is mind-blowing to me too. And that changed a lot of what music was. So when I, when I was looking to excellence in music, I didn't find it in, you know, hair bands. And I mean, although I've got a lot of friends who played in hair bands, very famous ones, for me, great music was great music. And it has to move you. You've either got to want to fight or... or kill to it you know i mean it really has to be something that makes you cry something moves you something that makes you something that makes you care you know something that makes you think rolling stones recorded in muscle shoals they did uh, of all the songs it'd be amazing they did white, white uh wild horses and uh brown sugar both were recorded at muscle shoals until they couldn't go back again because keith richards had a legality problem traveling to the united states <laughs> um but it, it's an amazing documentary to see. 
the first Leonard Skinner sessions were done there. I'll have and to watch that. They did, um, they did Freebird in the studio across the street. And the record company wouldn't release it until after they died. Then they wanted everything back and release it. You know, an 11-minute single was not a normal thing in those days. But uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of great music that was made. But there's, you know, so many areas. Some great documentaries there. But that's a great documentary to watch because you've got this tiny little place. And the story behind it is the guy that ran it. Who has the darkest story of anybody I've ever heard in my life? Like, mom was a prostitute. His brother burned alive with boiling, boiling water. He bought his dad a tractor, which overturned and killed his dad. I mean, it's like he's not exactly the luckiest guy in the world, but he had golden ears. And Jerry Wexler from, from Columbia was the guy that would send artists to this little studio because it just has this sound. It has a sound and a feel that no other place had. And you suddenly realize all the music that's around today, most of it's stolen from that. Most of it comes from that, which all comes from church, which all comes from every night. I mean, it's all about celebrating and loving and, and you know, putting your soul out there. My son, my oldest son's 23, 23 and a half, and he's an amazing soccer player and a lot of other things. He was a terrible DJ. But it just wasn't doing it for him. So he started playing piano. He had a teacher who's uh, a Berkeley professor who's in his 80s uh, called Ted Howe, great teacher. And about three and a half years later, my son is genuinely a jazz pianist. Um, but not because he wants to learn how to play other people's music, because he wants to know how to express himself the way he feels. And so you go, oh, that's a nice gig. You'll never make money as a jazz pianist. The smallest part of the record industry that exists is jazz nowadays. But um, he just produced and played on Miley Cyrus's last record. So he's not doing too badly at 23. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, he's credited on that. And he played. He's playing keys and bass and all sorts of crazy things. And he's, uh, she's an amazing. That's an amazing person that everyone has an opinion about and knows nothing about that person. But I've heard her voice in things and gone, oh my God, she can sing. She's got an extraordinary voice. And um, I think my kid is helping her find some of the new stuff. So we'll see what happens as the next thing. Yeah, it's kind of fun. My little overachieving family. What's up? Hey, Mark. Well, when, how old were you when you? When, how, what? Start again. It's the hat. Okay. I like the hat. I was just going to say that. When did you realize that you wanted to play drums? And who were people that influenced you? Well, my years? dad lived in a house with a um, woman with two kids, one of whom was the drummer of Madness later on. And so we, and she was the floor manager at Top of the Pops, the British chart show. So she would get, as the floor manager, she would get, thousands of albums the whole place was just covered in lps and so i was listening to a lot of records then he played drums so i wanted to play drums so i thought it was cool and that's when i did so around 12 years old that's when i started playing so it's something i love are we gonna see you at what are we ever gonna see you back standing here. drums at sns uh saturday night special i hope so i've got three i'm coming I'm back set. to it i've got three creation shows coming up ask rob ask rob is the person to ask because that's his show I mean, we built a thing that's rather wonderful and turned it from bad karaoke wedding band bullshit, you know, to, which it was, it's not nobody's fault, but that was just, there was no need for it into this massive, you know, touring show with, you know, yeah. 53 foot truck. And that's the main reason I go. Yeah, to, I think so. Go to them if you have anyone here been to creation special. shows, right. Well, you know, fair play to fair play to Gary and Adam and Stephanie and everybody. Um, they could tell. I said, they were like, do you want to play? And I was like, Ugh, not really. And then I got up and played, and they were like, oh, you play? I'm like, well, of course I play. I've been playing my whole life. And between Dick Spay and, um, and Rob and myself and Billy and the rest of the boys, we were like, we can do this if we do this properly. And Levon Helm, who was the drummer for the band, as in, you know, up on Cripple Creek and all those amazing songs over the years, always had a, a Saturday night special at his farm up near Woodstock, right? And he would have everyone over and watch the last waltz 
and you look at that and you just you bring your friends and you, you make music and people have a good time and i think between ostensibly between rob rich and myself um we kind of crafted it into something that just got bigger and bigger and bigger and gary and adam were very brave i mean they didn't understand why you wouldn't need a pa that was just this right they had this vocal pa that's all they had they were playing on stage with this to this amount of people right actually more people and it turned into a full touring show which is a lot of fun to do so if you haven't been and you're thinking of going know that the saturday night special is the, is my, certainly my favorite part of it and then yours too yeah um i it's, love i miss seeing you and steven no oh, steve and i had a lot yeah. of fun um i may or may not be doing something because i've got three creation shows coming up but we shall see Yes. Steve wrote a really, really cool song on the new Loudon Swain record, and I really like that. And we'll see if he'll, maybe he'll let me play it. It's a, it's a great song. Um, there's a lot of good stuff, but they are, they're wonderful people, man. And we fought really, really hard mm -hmm. to try to make something that, that would bring quality to the show, you know, as opposed to just waiting in lines and getting, you know, getting an autograph and getting a picture. As much as fun as that is. It's love. It's yeah, absolutely. Love. It's, you know, we play, we play some incredible shows. We did some incredible stuff. And then, of course, Jensen getting interested. He's got a great voice. And it just, it got nasty, which is wonderful. You know, it got really, really nasty. And it, it came away from the, the wedding band karaoke thing, which was being forced into by not having proper sound, not having the ability to, to play a proper show. And I think it was really brave of creation to do it. And they backed us 100% and we just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, we we did shows to three, four, five thousand people at times, which is just magic. I remember when Prince passed, we were playing in Minneapolis and doing Purple Rain as the encore. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't suck. That's fun to do. Paying a little homage, you know? Am I keeping you up? Yeah, you okay? Yeah. Good. What? Well, Hi. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to word this question so that everything was good. So here it goes. So what is your favorite work kiss and why was it some grumpy guy who owned a junkyard? What's my favorite workplace and what? What was your favorite work kiss oh. and why is it some grumpy guy who owned a junkyard? <laughs> I still can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, what was your favorite work kiss and why was it some grumpy guy who owns a junkyard? Oh. <laughs> that wasn't my first kiss on film. First kiss was in my first episode. Well, how favorite. do you know that wasn't my favorite? <laughs> I do like the fact that there, there have been certain scenarios where I may or may not have kissed somebody that they literally spent weeks torturing the person by letting them know in advance. <laughs> To which intellectually they had no problem with it, but viscerally it became a very interesting situation. <laughs> and then when executing said kiss that may or may not have happened on whatever show might have, might not have been there, um, they did take an inordinate amount of time to actually catch it on three cameras. <laughs> my iPhone in my pocket, I have a picture of it. I have three pictures of it, actually. And uh, yeah, it was basically torturing the other person. <laughs> Very soft lips, as far as I remember. <laughs> Thank you. Very. What? Um, being a musician and, and playing everything you play, I'm wondering if there's a musical artist, past or present, that you like would just fangirl yourself there are hundreds to play of with them. them. There are hundreds of them. I mean, this, it's just like if you don't love something, there's something really wrong with you. If you can't, you don't get excited by things, there's something missing in your life. You know, whether it's a show, whether it's music, whether it's something, it's, you know, music is the soundtrack to my life, you know? And we can tell the difference between things that are made with passion and things that are not. As human beings, we know when people um, care about what they're doing or whether it's cynical, you know? And we're very discerning in that way. And those things are wonderful. They, they mark us all. You know, there's so many people I'm like, I, I, well, I was in an airport lounge and Smokey Robinson was in an airport lounge. So I walked over to Smokey Robinson, told him how much I think about him and care about him and what he's done for me. Right in the middle of that, he said, oh, I love you on your show, man. <laughs> so he kissed me on the cheek and I smelled of Smokey's cologne for the rest of the day. 
I mean, what a what a voice that human being has. I mean, what a voice. And he's beautiful. And I now I know why he's called Smokey. You can see his eyes are smoke gray. Absolutely beautiful, man. But I was like, wow, you shaped my life. You know? You know, there's a lot of people that are gone. But it's funny, our heroes are not, I don't think our heroes are as cool as they used to be. It might be my age, but I don't think our heroes have actually earned you know, that sort of capacity. I still haven't gone down to Al Green's church, which I want to do sometime. I think he's in something like Athens or somewhere in Georgia. Mm-hmm. But I want to go down and go see a Sunday service with Al Green singing. I mean, can you imagine? No. A friend of mine was in a band in, in England, and they were rehearsing, and, they, and Al, Al Green was rehearsing to do the song from Scrooged with Annie Lennox, that weird Christmas song they did. Boring piece of crap. And uh, this band knew that Al Green was next door, so they started playing Al Green songs, like nonstop. (laughs) And Al Green came over, because he could hear the music. And he apparently went in there and spent about four hours singing Al Green songs with them. That's the kind of thing where you go, okay, (laughs) that I can live with, you know? That's the way to do it. What? Hi. um What? Into the mic. I'm trying, but they have to hear you. Keep coming closer. And so I'm- what? <laughs> Thanks. Um, you're so okay. <laughs> I'm so here. Yeah, you are, and now I can't think. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> it's my superpower. It is. You said not to meet your heroes, and now I'm just. Here you go. Come on. Okay. Sorry, my heart. Um. Okay. If you were a like action figure, what would your, your accessories been a, be? I've been like, an action yeah, figure. Yeah, but like, what would your ha- accessories be? Like Mark Shepard. Nah, I've been an action figure in so many things. Yes, but what would your accessories be? Like drums or like what kind of cool things? Cigar. A cigar would definitely be the accessory. I think that's the way to go. Me and a cigar. The Crowley Funko has a, a glass of scotch, but it looks like. Guinness. It's very weird. Looks like Diet Pepsi and water. It does, actually. <laughs> Foamed up. Thanks. Did him. Did him, did him. I'm trying to not cry. Did him, did him, did him, did him, did him, did him. Okay. Did him, did him. <laughs> so... What is your favorite genre of like TV shows or movies that you like to act in or watch? What's yours? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Interesting. Great costume, by the way. I like it. So am I. I'm from Walmart. Too. <laughs> um, I'm on sale right now as well. <laughs> um, there are so many things that are so good. You know, the last series I got really excited by. Uh, Better Call Saul. That was the last series I got really excited by. That was just amazing. That was just a dripping tap. That was that was a fun thing to watch. You all right? Nervous. Why? <laughs> but like, I'm a dad. You know, it's, it's, I'm just like a dad. I'm old, I'm young enough to be your kid at this point. What's red and sits in the corner? A naughty strawberry. <laughs> Whoa! It's a so good dad cool. joke. You like dad jokes? Yeah, I mean, my father is... What's long and brown and sticky? Stick. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Oh. Cool. Happy now? You can breathe. <sighs> nice to meet you. What? Um, I was wondering what would it take to get you to sit in the chair? What chair? The one in the middle. That would be literally promoting what I'm not supposed to be doing. It's just dumbassery. (laughs) It's also the wrong color. It's the same chair, but it's the wrong color. (laughs) Okay. But no, I can't do that. I mean, the last thing we want to do is create something that creates a problem. Yeah. And that would be creating a problem. That's that's character based. I don't, I don't walk around in a costume from any of my shows. Mm -hmm. Until they start doing shows where I look like this. Why are you walking backwards? <laughs> I'm having the same problem. It's really bad. Walk forwards. Yeah. Okay. 
when the monster behind is behind you is bigger than the monster in front of you, you walk forwards. When the monster in front of you is bigger than the monster behind you, you walk backwards. <laughs> okay. What do you need to know? Why I won't sit in the chair? Is that it? No, I, I didn't think about it. That's I when I when I came up to ask the question, I didn't think about. You have to talk into that when you're speaking to so here. <laughs> when yeah. like um when I came up here to ask the question, I didn't think about the okay. Like, did you have a question? Yeah, applications. No, that was the only thing. Okay, cool. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. What do you want? <laughs> um, so last year you actually made fun of my costume. Why? What were you dressed as? I was a particular individual that you don't necessarily like with wings from the show that we're not supposed to talk about. And you called me a particular a individual with wings. Who are you talking about? Uh, with trench coat? Who? <laughs> oh, we can say it. Oh. What's the name? Castiel. Never heard of her. <laughs> um, so, I also had another thing. So, what if you can't sit on that chair because of a particular Crowley? Because I don't want to. Why don't you want to? Because I don't want to. Why? Moving on. Why doesn't Mark Shepard sit up there instead of the person? Because it's, you can't uh, distinguish between the two. I can. <laughs> We can't distinguish from the I fact that I am to love Misha, but I don't necessarily know what the hell that idiot I learnt see in 14 you years. As the agent from a different TV show. I don't see you as. Which one? Uh, from Doctor Who. Oh, very cool. What if she sits on the chair? Could I sit on the chair? <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Could, could I don't help yourself. I don't care. <laughs> Off you go. Can I go? Do you want to go no. with me? No. Too late. Do you want to go with me? No. Off you go. Next question. Hello. Uh, my question is, if you had to do it all over again, would you become famous? If I had to do what? Shut up. Go sit down. You look very small up there. Sorry, if I had to do what all over again? If you had to do your career over again, would what you... What career? Any career, your acting career. Okay. Uh, would you want to be famous and lose your privacy? <laughs> if I want to be famous... Would you want... Do you really think I did this to be famous? No, I think you did it because you love it. I did it for the stories we could tell. But the loss of privacy and everything that goes along with being famous was the... Um, Nobody messes with me. I'm good. I'm pretty private. Occasional people try to show up at my house, but that's it. But people are generally nice. Those that aren't usually have a problem, and usually that problem is talkable with, and people are uncomfortable or difficult, or they're usually having a hard time one way or another. You know... People tend to treat me nice. I tend to be the bad guy in a lot of situations. So people are a bit like, ooh. But yeah, Good. I, All right. I love what I do. When people come up and tell me they love what I do, why would I not be happy? We love what you do too. What? We love what you do as I know that. Yes. Otherwise you wouldn't be here but listening to me talking about I mean, hypothetical tall people and <laughs> people that build hospitals and schools in funny countries. They pay us to come in and talk to you. They so don't. You they really good. don't. <laughs> You're not being paid enough, I guarantee that. <laughs> Hiya. Hi. What's up, Beth? I would like to know what it was like to work on the X-Files. Hey, see, I can't really answer that. Can't do it. Um, I will tell you, every job that I've done, I've enjoyed for different reasons. I'm, I've been very public about working on stuff. There are a lot of series that I've done that were in their infancy when I did them. And so they didn't really know what they had until they... Um, until they got into it. And there are certainly a lot of series in my early career that were, were the beginnings of things, which are a lot of fun to do, especially when nobody has a clue whether something's going to be a big deal or not. You know, it's kind of fun. And that's some of the most fun is help building things, you know? Yep. Thank that's, you. Yeah. What's up? Hi. Um, so I have a music question for you. I'm a... C sharp. <laughs> I'm a competitive ballroom dancer and I'm always looking for... Competitive a ballroom. Doesn't that sound like... <laughs> That's something that somebody would say to you as an insult. You're a really competitive ballroom dancer. A little bit, yeah. Shouldn't you be a cooperative ballroom dancer? No, it's a little cut. You need though. to. But, but you're competitive with your with your partner. Me and my partner with everyone else. Oh, that's okay. As long as you're not competitive with each other, that's the best thing. <laughs> I'm better than you. <laughs> um, he tries. Okay. It work. And um, 
So I'm always looking for song choices. So do you have any recommendations for a song? In ballroom dancing? <laughs> I just did Carry On My Wayward Son. Yeah, I know. I saw the picture. Um, <laughs> God, there's a lot of changes in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Freebird. There you go. You've got 11 minutes to dance. <laughs> Uh, no, I really don't. I can't think of ballroom dancing songs. That'd be great. Well, what's Although favorite? I love Latin music, so. What's your favorite song? Um, theme from The Simpsons. Fair. <laughs> Thank you. No idea. What? All right, so I know you love dad jokes, so I just want to like, do my favorite dad joke for you. What is it? Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Broken pencil. Broken pencil who? Never mind, it's pointless. <laughs> You're gonna give a round of applause for that? What do you call a man with a shovel on his head? Doug. What do you call a man with no shovel on his head? Douglas. What do you call a man with a seagull on his head? Cliff. An epileptic in a barrel of leaves? Russell. <laughs> what? Um, so many of those. Man with a car on his head? Jack. <laughs> it's always good. What do you want? Um, you have to talk into the mic. So I was um, wondering, after a long day at... Uh, at work, uh, what do you like to do to de-escalate? Sleep. <laughs> um, also, speaking of Jack dad jokes, what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Still no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you call a lady with one leg? Eileen. What you call a lady with no legs? No lean. Or Bob. No, that's, that's, with, that's in the swimming pool, is Bob. What do you call a dog with no legs? A what? You call a, dog with no legs. a dog with no legs? No. A where, you find a dog with no legs. where you left him. <laughs> where you find a dog with no legs, exactly where you left him. What? What are you looking at? No, we don't. We're good. All right, we're going to do two more questions just to be difficult. Go on. It's just a stupid joke, but how do you find Will Smith in the snow? No idea. Look for the fresh prints. Oh! I like that. That's pretty good, actually. Go on. Okay, so... Take us home. It better be a great question. No pressure. Oh! Da, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Okay, so um, da, da, no, <laughs> I am a faster, faster, faster. I, okay, oh. joking. Okay, I'm joking. Okay, <laughs> okay. What's so, your question? Okay, so I like to write music. I write lyrics, and I wanted to know if you had any concepts that you think should be put into a song that have not been put into a song yet. As I say to anybody who asks me questions about content and art, write your own fan fiction. It doesn't matter what I like. It matters what you like. It matters okay. what you want to do. Look, the world, I'm going to say this as we wrap this up. The world is a really complex and difficult place right now. And a lot of the sense of community has disappeared, right? We're online. We're not meeting people. You get to come to places like this and you get to meet people and make friends whether you like it or not. Um, and you get to see people and you get to share your experiences and have a good time and, and it's a safe place. You don't about, hear about people getting stabbed at conventions. Actually, that's not true. There was a stabbing <laughs> at San Diego Comic Con where one guy stabbed another guy in the hand with a pencil. It was over a girl that neither of them knew. <laughs> yeah, that's the story of our lives. And then they made up and hugged and everything was fine. But. Generally, this is a non-violent, non non-judgmental, open, comfortable place to be. You're welcome here, whether you walk in, hop in, you're on wheels, makes no difference. Nobody cares who you love, who you meet, who you, who you marry, who you pray to. Nobody gives a damn. That's the bottom line. 
We don't give a damn. This is a safe and inclusive place, I believe. And it's our job to keep it that way. And I think the genre of what we do is a wonderful antidote to what is actually going on in the world right now, right? There's a lot of harsh and mean crap going on. And it's really, really hard to survive it. It's really, really hard not to take stuff personally. It's really, really hard to travel on an airplane right now. It's hard to do a lot of things. But remember, if you're suffering from mental health issues, stop giggling. Uh, if you're suffering from mental health issues, understand something. Ask people to put their hands up who had diagnosed mental health disorders, right? Put them up. Look around you. You are not alone. Some of you are lying just because it's cool to have mental health disorders, but I'm joking. Um, but you are not alone. And remember that you are not alone. And the things that bring us together and the things that protect us are vital at times like this. The world's gone to hell in a handbasket. And we are the microcosm to make the landing a little softer, right? We are there to make the landing a little softer. So look after each other, love each other, no matter what. You know, we're not in competition with each other. We're trying to be of loving service to other human beings and take care of each other. As corny as that sounds, it's the thing that makes the world go around and makes us happy. I know that when I'm of loving service to another human being in any way, when I get my ego out of the way and my fear out of the way, and I am helpful to another human being, I get to feel like a human being. The concept of karma is instant. It's instant. I get to do something and it makes me feel good. That's the bottom line. It's not what I'm going to get. It makes me feel good. I feel love by giving love, not receiving love. So this is a closed off world and a difficult place to be in, a very difficult time to be in this place. And if you're suffering from identity crises or physical issues or mental health issues, all you have to know is you're not alone. You are not alone. Genuinely, you are not alone. And I love that TV shows and music and these things bring us together. And they settle our differences because it's a universal idea of loving something and caring about something that makes us connect. Don't lose that for any reason. It doesn't matter about politics. It doesn't matter about these things. Of course, it does matter that you vote. It does matter that you care. It does matter that you help. But the noise is the noise and it's interrupting us from being kind to each other and loving each other. So if there's any message here to be done, you see somebody struggling, put your hand out, right? And if you're not going to show that you're struggling, you're going to have to change that. And you're going to have to say, can I get a little help here? Because there's no shame in that. None at all. There is shame in killing yourself. There is shame in killing somebody else. There's shame in all these things. It's just a massive shame for the want of a few kind words or a good deed or your hand being out. You know, people harm themselves. People harm each other. And that doesn't need to be that way. So please be nice to each other, look after each other, and love each other, because there's nothing better on this planet. I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you out. Hi, this is Aaron Douglas, Chief from Battlestar Galactica. You are watching Fandom Spotlight. Have fun, and follow your fracking fandom. <laughs>